it's no secret, smartphones are getting expensive, which is partly the reason I make videos on wallet-friendly phones, aside from my lack of funds to cover flagships. Over the last few years, budget devices are getting better and might make you rethink that £1,000 you might want to splash out on a new phone. Well, enter the old flagships in a new series of videos where I'll be focusing on these once expensive phones, seeing if they're still worth buying three, four, or even five years later. So that's where the Pixel 4 XL from 2019 and the Huawei Mate 20 Pro from 2018 come in. Two old flagship phones with high-end specs. Hopefully I'll answer some questions that you may have. How do they compare? Are they worth buying in 2023? And if so, which one should you pick? This is Ash Does Tech, let's dive in. Now, smartphone designers come a very long way since these two phones were released, but having said that, they still offer a really premium design. Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and back, aluminium frame and IP68 water and dust resistance. Both phones also support wireless charging and the Pixel 4 XL has a matte finish to the back of the phone, at least in this white, while the Mate 20 Pro is a glossy finish. The matte finish on the Pixel 4 XL does make it more pleasing to hold without a case and also makes it more resistant to fingerprints and the white colour helps that out too. And as for the buttons and ports, there are a couple of differences. The Pixel 4 XL has the usual USB Type-C charging port and speaker grille on the bottom, volume and power buttons on the left, and the right of the phone has the SIM tray and there's a microphone at the top. And for the most part, the Mate 20 Pro is identical. However, Huawei removed the speaker grille and placed it inside the charging port. A few reviewers reported muffled sounds when you had a charger plugged in while music was playing, but I personally didn't have any issues with this. The sound was pretty clear and sounded really good. The SIM tray is also located at the bottom of the phone as well. As for the screens, these are similar. Both are a 6.3 inch Quad HD OLED displays, and this means a pixel density of more than 500 PPI. The Pixel 4 XL has a 90 Hertz display, whereas the Mate 20 Pro is stuck at just 60 Hertz, but this is a curved display and both displays are great, tack sharp and great colour reproduction. And now this is where it gets interesting. The Pixel 4 XL has a giant bezel across the top of the display, which houses the Face ID tech, which is super fast and responsive. But the Mate 20 Pro has a similar Face ID setup, this time in an iPhone style notch. This I found to be less accurate, with more instances of misreading my face. And the Mate 20 Pro does have an in-display fingerprint scanner, which works well, except I have put a third-party screen protector on, so now it just doesn't work. Up in these notches, of course, house the selfie cameras. On the Mate 20 Pro, you get a whopping 24 megapixel f2.0 sensor and an eight megapixel f2.0 sensor on the Google Pixel 4 XL. But as we all know, megapixels don't tell the whole story, but I'll go through all of this in a bit. As for performance, the Mate 20 Pro uses Huawei's in-house Kirin 980 processor built on a seven nanometer fabrication, while the Pixel 4 XL uses the Snapdragon 855, also built on a seven nanometer architecture. But everyday use on both phones has been flawless in my time. No stutters and apps open very quickly. Overall, the Pixel feels smoother, but likely down to the 90 Hertz refresh rate. And both phones have six gigabytes of RAM, which is about right back then. But the Mate 20 Pro has the advantage of having 128 gigs of base storage, topping out at 256. Whereas the Pixel is stuck at 64 gigabytes of base storage, topping out at 128. And the Mate 20 Pro also supports expandable storage, but granted using its own proprietary nano memory card. So I'd say in terms of overall performance, both phones have been very, very reliable. And as for battery life, the Mate 20 Pro also wins in this department with a much larger 4200 milliamp hour cell over the 3700 milliamp in the Pixel. And the Mate 20 Pro also supports much faster 40 watt wire charging over the 18 watts of the Pixel and also 15 watt wireless charging over the maximum 11 watts on the Pixel, but that is using their own charging stand. The Mate 20 Pro also supports reverse wireless charging, although this is just two and a half watts, so hardly worth using, at least for another phone anyway. So storage and battery, the Mate 20 Pro clearly has the edge, but in terms of software, this is another story. On the Mate 20 Pro, it's using the old Android 10 with a new version of EMUI version 12.0, Whereas on the Pixel, it's using the new Android 13, so it's very up-to-date with software and security patches. So if you're someone that wants a very up-to-date phone that's an older phone that you can get at a better price, the Pixel 4 XL is going to be the better option of the two. So lastly, and likely the main reason that you're all here, let's talk about the cameras on both of these phones. 
The Pixel 4 XL has a dual camera setup with a 12 megapixel f1.7 primary camera with a 16 megapixel f2.4 two times telephoto camera as well. And the Mate 20 Pro ups this to a triple camera setup consisting of a 40 megapixel f1.8 primary, a 20 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide, and an 8 megapixel f2.4 three times telephoto camera. So, a win for Huawei, right? Well, if only it was that simple. Now, while the Mate 20 Pro might win in raw specs and an extra camera, let's let the photos do the talking. And in most cases, I found the pixel photos to be sharper with more contrast. Now, the Mate 20 Pro photos do have plenty of detail, but I find the pixel to do better with finer detail. And both shoot photos with natural color. Huawei's AI mode has been toned down a lot since the P20 Pro, which was very welcome. And on the Pixel, you can also manually adjust the highlights and the shadows before you take the photo, which is a nice area of flexibility. And I do find that the portraits on the Pixel come out more natural looking with more detail. Notice my beard hair, the detail on my skin, and even the material of my hoodie all come out with detail from the Pixel. Look at my left eye as well. It's also a lot sharper on the Pixel than on the Huawei as well. Subject separation is similar, but because of the extra detail overall on the Pixel, it just looks a lot cleaner. So despite the Mate 20 Pro having a massive 40 megapixel resolution, which pixel bins down to 10 megapixel photos for theoretically brighter and more detailed photos, I have found that the Pixel's 12 megapixel camera consistently produces better photos with more detail and just a little bit sharper, which is what I do prefer out of the two. Color science is similar when switching to the telephoto on both phones. And in the case of the Huawei, the ultra wide is consistent too. It's a similar story with the selfie camera. Despite Huawei having three times the resolution, the Pixel again produces sharper photos and handles HDR better as well. My face looks overexposed, whereas the Pixel controls this well, all while producing that higher level of detail. And video tops out at 4K on both phones from the main camera and 1080p from the selfie camera. So for me, it's a no brainer. I think the Pixel is the better camera experience, but let me know in the comments what you think. So that's my comparison between the Pixel 4 XL and the Huawei Mate 20 Pro in 2023. Still really great phones, the pair of them. I've had no issues with day-to-day -day performance. With the Mate 20 Pro offering better battery life with faster charging, a curved display and a more versatile camera system. Whereas the Pixel uses up-to-date Android 13 software, it has a 90 Hz OLED display and overall just a better camera system. But let me know in the comments what you think of both of these phones in 2023. Are any of you using them today or are you considering buying any of these phones? Do let me know in the comments and let me know if there's any other old flagship devices that you'd like me to take a look at. Drop a like on this video and subscribe so you don't miss out when I upload new videos. Thank you for watching again and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.